three earthquakes of magnitude seven or greater in less than 20 days. You read that right, three. And all of them happened in the same place, that horseshoe-shaped region that surrounds the Pacific Ocean and that you've probably heard of, the Ring of Fire. And look, I spent the last five days immersed in United States geological survey data, analyzing seismic reports, reading expert statements published in scientific outlets, and what I discovered is something you need to understand right now. Because if you live anywhere near the Pacific, and we're talking about an area that stretches from the coast of Alaska to New Zealand, this directly affects you. Let me explain what exactly is happening right now beneath our feet, or rather beneath the ocean. On December 8th, 2025, at 11.15 in the evening local time, the Earth shook violently off the northeastern coast of Japan. Magnitude 7.5. And before you think it was just another earthquake in a region that's already used to this, let me tell you why this one was different. The depth was only 53 kilometers, relatively shallow for an earthquake of this magnitude. And the epicenter was 80 kilometers off the coast of Aomori. Think about it. 80 kilometers is like the distance between Seattle and Tacoma. Now imagine an earthquake of this intensity happening so close to a populated area. Nine days later, on December 17th, it was Vanuatu's turn, magnitude 7.3, very close to the capital, Port Vila. And look, I'm going to be honest with you. When I saw the first reports, I thought it was a coincidence. Two big earthquakes in a week and a half? Okay, that happens. But then came the third one, December 27th, Taiwan. Magnitude 7.0 according to Taiwanese authorities, 6.6 .6 according to the USGS. And here's the detail that made me stop and really pay attention. All these events happened along the same tectonic belt, this 40,000 kilometer zone where 90% of the world's earthquakes occur. And you know what makes this even more significant? The context of 2025 as a whole, because these three December events didn't happen in isolation, man. They're the culmination of a year that has been, statistically speaking, one of the most seismically active in recent decades. Let me show you the numbers. And this data comes directly from the USGS, so it's not speculation, it's verified fact. On July 30th of this year, the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia was hit by an earthquake of magnitude 8.8. .8. You heard that right, 8.8. .8. This was the first earthquake of magnitude 8 or higher since 2021. Four years without any event of this scale, and suddenly, boom. And look, when you read scientific articles published by seismologists with 30 years of experience, saying they've never observed an activity pattern like that of 2025, you pay attention. We're talking about 15 major events throughout the year, approximately 8,000 people who lost their lives in seismic events. And that makes 2025 one of the most devastating years for earthquakes since 2011. So when we get to December and see the sequence of three magnitude seven plus earthquakes in 20 days, it's not paranoia to look at this and think something is happening. It's analysis based on real data, on historical patterns, on solid science. Now, going back specifically to the Japan event on December 8th, because this one deserves special attention. The tremor lasted more than 30 seconds. And I know 30 seconds doesn't sound like much, but when the Earth is literally moving beneath you, every second feels like an eternity. The maximum intensity was classified as Shindo 6 plus on the Japanese scale, which is like, imagine the scale goes up to seven and six plus means you literally can't stand up. Heavy objects fall, walls crack, it's total chaos. And the tremor was felt all the way in Tokyo, which is 300 kilometers away. To give you an idea, that would be like an earthquake in San Francisco being felt strongly in Los Angeles. Japanese authorities evacuated more than 90,000 people from the coastal region because, and here comes the part that really scares, they issued a tsunami warning. Waves up to three meters high were initially predicted. Fortunately, and what a strange word to use in this context, the waves that arrived were smaller, 70 centimeters in Kuji, 50 centimeters in other locations. But even so, 47 people were injured, seven houses collapsed completely, and more than 2,300 structures suffered damage. Hospitals, schools, commercial ports. And here's the detail that really worried me when I read the official reports. The Japan Meteorological Agency did something it rarely does. They issued a megaquake alert. That's right, you heard it. Megaquake. And look, this isn't a term they use lightly. The alert means there's an increased probability, even if it's only 1%, 
that an earthquake of magnitude 8 or greater could occur in the region in the coming days. And when you read in official documents that a megaquake in this area could generate tsunamis up to 30 meters high, that's as tall as a 10-story building, and potentially cause 199,000 casualties according to government estimates, you understand why 182 municipalities were on maximum alert. According to reports from Japanese media, people were instructed to sleep with clothes, helmets, and emergency backpacks next to their beds. Stores reported a massive increase in purchases of bottled water, disaster kits, flashlights, and here's something few people know, but that I discovered when reading about the seismic history of the region. This area, near where the December 8th earthquake occurred, was devastated in 2011 by the magnitude 9.0 earthquake that generated the tsunami that claimed nearly 20,000 lives and caused the Fukushima nuclear disaster. So when I say people take these warnings seriously, it's not an exaggeration. It's living memory, it's collective trauma, it's real experience. Now let's talk about the sequence that came after Japan, because December 2025 was like a live demonstration of how the Ring of Fire works. Nine days after the Japanese earthquake, on December 17th, Vanuatu was struck. And look, Vanuatu is a small island nation in the South Pacific, but the magnitude 7.3 earthquake that hit it was devastating on a scale that few recent events have managed to be. The epicenter was just 30 kilometers west of Port Vila, the capital. 30 kilometers. That's practically nothing in geological terms. To visualize, it would be like an earthquake of this magnitude happening at the distance between downtown Seattle and Bellevue. Proximity like this means direct impact, without distance attenuation, and the result was exactly what you'd imagine. 14 people lost their lives, 265 were injured, and approximately 80,000 people were directly affected by the event. Let me put that number in context for you. Vanuatu has a total population of about 300,000 inhabitants. 80,000 affected means that more than a quarter of the country's entire population was impacted by a single geological event. According to UN reports, buildings collapsed, including one that housed the embassies of the United States, United Kingdom, France, and New Zealand. Port Vila's central hospital was damaged, forcing the transfer of patients to military camps. And after Vanuatu came Taiwan, December 27th, magnitude 7.0, and here's where the story gets interesting from a scientific standpoint. The epicenter was off the coast of Yilan, northeastern Taiwan, at a depth of 73 kilometers. And that extra depth, compared to the 53 kilometers of the Japanese earthquake, made all the difference. Deeper earthquakes tend to have their impact attenuated by the distance to the surface. Result, despite the significant magnitude, the damage was relatively limited. Approximately 3,500 residences were temporarily without power. There were some gas and water leaks, cracks in buildings, but no loss of life was reported. 